Hey everybody, let's talk about tables. This is probably one of my favorite um, features in Word. I use it all the time, but I'm always organizing something or other. When I create tables, I like to have my non-printing characters on. And then I always give it one above and one below because when you put a table in, sometimes it's hard to click above or below without making the table just bigger. And I don't want to be in the table. I want to be you know, in a line above the table or a line below the table. So that's just a habit I have to make things easier if I need to navigate around the table once I have it entered. All right, insert table. You have a couple ways of putting in a table. You can drag it like this and see dynamically what the table's gonna look like. I think that's awesome. You can also click this button and then put in numerically what you want. And um, I never do it that way. So I know I want uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, four. Um, so my kids, we call them by their number. We have number one, number two, and number three, and number four. Um, one of my friends says, oh God, I would never want to be number two. <laughs> I was like, well, I'd never thought of that till you said it, but thanks. All right. So, um, tables. The circle means that's the end of the table, or like the end of the cell. So you can put your cursor in front of that. You can type in. Um, whatever you need. You can see as I do the day it gives me um, what it thinks I want and I can press enter and it'll finish it for me. I'm, he I'm using tab to go across so I'm not taking my hands off the keyboard which, um, well there was an error, <laughs> which um, enter tab makes typing in faster. Sweet. I use my arrow keys also in when I'm in a table to go down or to the side. Again, I just think they're faster. When you want to select things in a table, you can come over here to the side, and when you get that arrow pointing to the thing, you can, uh, pointing to the thing, that was very descriptive, wasn't it? Pointing to the row, you can click once and it's going to grab the whole row. And um, you can also click off when you get the down arrow like that. Click once and you're going to get the whole column. And you can click and drag and grab more than one column. Alright, you also have some options for adding rows and columns. And you can do it through your tab here. You can always do everything that has to do with a table within these two tabs. So here in your layout it gives you insert a column to the right, to the left, and up and down. And so that's fine. You can absolutely do it that way. I prefer to right click and do it um, in here. I don't know. I suppose it really doesn't matter. So that's one way to do it. Um, if you highlight the column and right click, it knows that you want to insert a column. Oh, it still gives you all the features. Interesting. I thought it would just give you columns. I'm going to want to go to the right. So we'll add another day there. Now with rows, same deal, you can right click or use the bar to insert a row. Um, you may have trouble seeing that on the screen, so I'll do it over here. Insert a row above or below, so you can absolutely do it that way. Um, but I prefer just to put my cursor there at the end and hit enter on my keyboard, and it's going to give me a blank row at the bottom. And uh, let's say we want to merge this whole row and have one line of text underneath the table. We could do that right here with merge. So I can put that in the middle. And with tables, you have the option of aligning not just to the side, left, right, but also top, bottom, which is pretty slick. Go back to my Home tab where all my font features are. There we go. All right, you also have choices about color. 
so I could highlight each day of the week and give it a different, um, sorry, going here, design, shading, and give it a different fill color like that. You can do that, you know, in one by one, or you can come over here and pick one of these, which is really cool because you can grab one like, oh, this one looks nice. Try it, and you go, oh yeah, I don't like that. And go right back and use the clear button there. You could also modify the table style if you wanted to change it a little bit, and then you could save it. I, I bet you could save it too. Let's say I'm gonna clear that, and it goes back. It gets rid of my borders. I like my borders, so I'm gonna put those back on. There we go. All right. Let's find another one. Why do I always feel compelled to do blue? I guess it's because they're all boys. Okay. Looks a lot like the one I just picked. Okay, I don't know. Anyway, that looks fine. I'm going to take this column here and center it, though. I want it to be there. Much better. All right, and um, let's say I I want to get rid of the I want the shading out of this one, and I I want it to just be clear design shading and nothing. There we go. So now it looks like an empty box. And let's say I want this one to have a black box around it. I go here to borders and just do the outside border. Okay. You also have a choice for fitting a table. So I'm going to click within the table to get my contextual tabs here. And I'm going to go to layout. And this auto fit is a pretty slick feature. You can set it to fit to whatever's in the table. So the columns that need to be wider will automatically do it. You can fit to the window or you could do a fixed column width where everything's the same. So I, I usually do fit to window and I think it's already set to that. You can also distribute the rows and distribute the columns. So in that case, we would go here, distribute rows, and it makes it even within that much space. So that's a time saver. And we'll put this in the center. And, um, there we go. Okay, that's a pretty nice looking chore list. So let's say um, everybody has to feed the chickens. Quick way I'm going to do it is copy this, Control C, and then I'm just going to click and do Control V, Control V, Control V, and then on Friday it goes right back up to number one. All right. So this is where quick keys really come in handy. All right. So you can see you can make up a list really quickly and um, get stuff in there. All right. You could also do a list like this with the days and each one of your classes and put in your homework assignments or um, due dates if you were feeling overwhelmed about the number of different due dates coming at you. It's a nice way to organize it. Also, when I was in college, I would have this made up and have the hours here of the day. And then I would say like whether I was in class or working or um, studying. And it was a nice way to sort of organize my week and figure out, you know, make sure I was doing what I was supposed to be doing at the right time. And I found that helpful because then I could um, make sure I had enough to study time booked in my week um, that I wasn't going to run out of time to study. And I had a friend who had, um, he would have yellow boxes. He had the same sort of graph, but he had these boxes that were yellow. And we're like, what's what's yellow mean? Was that like a special, what is that time? Because there's no words, it was just a yellow box. He's like, yeah, I'm a yellow time. That's for when I just chill. <laughs> I was like, what is that? You sit on the sofa? He's like, yeah, I just, you know, relax. <laughs> I thought that was great. So, uh, if you don't have enough yellow time in your calendar, get some yellow time in there. All right, see you guys later.